Are you ready? Luther, tell me. Did you frame this today, Ace? Ace, <laughs> did you frame this house today? Talk to me. Speak. Speak. Can you speak? Hey, did you frame it? Roof. Hey, mister, are you listening to me? Oh, he's got, he's he told me he had a sore back still. You have a sore back, <laughs> huh? You don't act like you have a sore back. Everybody, I'm Randy Jones and this is Ace. And tonight's show is about framing the house. And the reason is we have a customer where we're building a house uh, out of town, or Amish are building a house. We had some pictures downloaded, and there's some questioning about their framing. And if you're watching, I'll be calling you, and we'll run through that to the customer. Right. And, uh, but, of course, I don't mention names, nothing like this, but I thought sometimes our shows are so watched by all of our customers. All right? So I want to be able to point it out as a video and show what's going on. All right? Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the pictures that, that we did, there's two ways of framing a house. This subfloor that you guys see right here, mm -hmm. okay, as you can see, it's underneath the two by four wall, right? Mm -hmm. It's a two by three. We use two by threes on here, which is perfect. As you can see, all this plumbing, if we were to drill a hole through that, it would take out the same amount of that. There's no support lost here. There's no walls moving. We don't have to worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. It's screwed straight down. Our V groove goes over top of this. Our sheeting goes over top of that. Cutting that out doesn't interfere with any of the strength on this home. Okay. The floor joists that run across and cantilever across here are carrying all the weight. See these two screws and these two screws? Mm -hmm. They're carrying all the weight vertically straight down. All right. Up top there, we've got a double top plate. We don't need a double top plate in building these homes. We do it to gain our extra, extra length that we have because we buy these two by fours a certain length. It gives us, and it also, it straightens out the walls for the guys that are not real experienced. So we just put a double top plate done and it locks in the corners. Mm -hmm. Not needed, but we go ahead and do it. Why not do it, right? Mm -hmm. For a few extra dollars. Maybe he's trying to jump down. He's got some stairs. Oh, oh good. Um, okay. One of the pictures, as you guys can see, all right, when you frame this, this house, we floored the house first, then we put the walls up. Okay. We don't normally, all, we don't always do that. In some conditions, we didn't have the flooring at the time, mm -hmm. so we would frame the walls right on the, on the floor joists, right? And then we would take this flooring and butt it up to, the, up, up to the inside of this wall. So what happens is you build the whole wall, the whole house, and there's no subfloor inside yet. Mm -hmm. And it looks weird. You know why it looks weird? is because right here where these, these wheel wells are, mm -hmm. there's a big hole right here. There's a big hole right here, right? Okay, normally you don't ever see that because we build the floor, we sheet the floor, we build the walls and you never see this right here. Then when we sheet across this, it's all gone. It's kind of a closet nobody ever sees. Mm -hmm. Well, in this picture the Amish had taken they had no subfloor, and, it's, and all you look, you're inside the house looking down and seeing tires. Mm -hmm. You're going, wow, that looks weird. And I agree, it surely did. It looked like something was missing, mm -hmm. you know, but there's not. They'll run the floor just like this, right over top of the tires, right over the top. What we do is we put our fenders, we take these wheels off, we build fenders underneath here, and we insulate the floor here before it leaves. All right? Mm -hmm. It's another cost-saving mechanism that we use. If these homes are going to be like an RV and run up and down the highways and byways and they're going to be salt and rain and all that stuff, we do this totally different. 99.9% .9 of all of our homes are stationary homes. They don't go anywhere. Even if they travel once a year, there's no reason putting all this money in a big fender system, right? <laughs> But that was a, a real alarming thing to see is when you're inside your house, you look down and see tires. Every house is framed that way. Every house has cantilevered two by sixes. Every house is framed with two by uh, threes. Now, another thing is, and we'll walk down and see David framing tonight. I pointed out that we do not use sheeting on top of our roof systems at all. Mm -hmm. At all. I don't even, uh, as what we're doing now, uh, 
I don't even recommend it. It is working so well, it alleviates any moisture problems, right? You can sheet it, it's fine. The only thing we do is when you sheet it, then you put a, um, a barrier on the outside. It's a waterproof barrier, okay? So what happens is when you sheet the roof with plywood, you just can't put your metal down on top of that. You have to put a water membrane over top of that, then we put our roofing over top of that. Then when we spray foam underneath there, and then you put your V-groove, well, when you spray foam, you just never want any um, air in between the foam and the outside. Any gaps or anything, because that causes condensation, right? Hot, hitting cold if there's a hole in the foam. That's why I love spraying right to the metal. We spray right mm -hmm. to it, there's no gaps, there's no air, nothing. It's okay to sheet the wood, you can sheet it, but then you use membrane. It's just an added cost, an added step. There's no reason for it. It doesn't add any strength to the house, all right? Any added strength that's needed. Let's say any added strength that's needed. I'm not an engineer. I can't say it doesn't add any more strength. It's not needed. Right. Okay? So what David's doing tonight, he's building a house. Now think about it. I want to show you tonight. You can see him down there working, right? He is one guy building the whole house. Right. He's not got a bit of sweat dripping off of his nose. Right. All right? He's not, his back's not hurting. He's not working 16 hours a day. And he's building a whole house that's 9 by 28. 9 by 28. By himself. Mm -hmm. Right. He's doing what we taught him to do. Right. Plus he's adding a whole bunch of common sense mm -hmm. to the picture. Right. We've had guys come in here and say, this is where you drill, this is where you put a wire, this is where you put this. We lay it out, give them the tools, tell them where to drill, where to go, what to do, even write it out, and you walk away in this like deer in the headlights. If you're like that, you don't come here. Right. You don't last. I got a couple guys that are leaving mm -hmm. and a couple guys that have left. I want the best. I do, want, do not want somebody that we have to constantly babysit to figure it out. He came here, he was in supervision for years. He hadn't swung a hammer. Mm -hmm. He come here, he used his skills and common sense. He's building, this is his fifth home yep. by himself. By himself. And he's in retirement age. Correct. I got another guy, Vince, same mm -hmm. way. Common sense. Right. You ask a bunch of questions, get them answered. Mm -hmm. He's like the tortoise. He beats and wins the race. Slow and steady. All right? I got young men in here that cannot do it. Right. And they're not, and they're, he's not working any harder than they are. I love this industry because whatever we do can be taken down, redone very quickly and figured out. This is not rocket science. Right. If anybody says to me that these homes have to be built like a home in a subdivision that you guys are living in, you don't know what you're talking about. Correct. They don't. You have a 62 inch rafter that can only collect so much snow. The snow load is directly over this stud, which is directly over this floor joist on a steel trailer. The amount of snow load that can be on top of this house, even if it was flat, this is overbuilt house right here. This is overbuilt for what we're doing. You take in consideration an RV. An RV has two by twos, inch and a half by inch and a half, right here, stud, inch and a half. That's all it is. So the house is less, less than this, right? With a flat roof, and they go 80 miles an hour down the road. Mm -hmm. I don't know why everybody's concerned that these houses are, may not be strong enough or they're not built right. We could do this, I could put siding on the outside of this with no sheeting if it's square plumb and level and spray foam on the siding and it's done, it's fine. It's not gonna move, it's just as, I say just as strong, I'm sure if you put sheeting on it, it would be stronger, right? Mm -hmm. Is it needed is the point. You know, I'm gonna continue sheeting these walls. Um, I won't sheet the roofs. It's just, I love spray foaming against the metal. Mm -hmm. All right, somebody said, well, what if there's a massive meteorite storm and I get littered with debris on my house and it's dented all the pieces and I want a new roof on it, right? Right. All right, you take out all the screws, you hire somebody, and you put metal right on top of it. Another right. color, the same mm -hmm. color you would like. All right, and that's it. <clears throat> I like the system. 
Uh, this is another one-man show right here. Mm -hmm. This is Brett. Right. He got here this morning. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I think his subfloor was on. <clears throat> and he framed all this today. Mm -hmm. Took his time. No big deal. He worked about eight, nine hours, went home. Right? Mm -hmm. He's got his rafters cut. Everything's set. He'll put his rafters on tomorrow. And he'll sheet it and be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a, four days. It's all ready now to wire him take his wire and plumbing go. You can see how this can be done in just several weeks. And we've got guys out there that's taking eight and 10 weeks to build a house and it's killing me. I can't, I just, they, they can't be here. Right. Right? It's just wrong. Because I've taken high school boys out of high school that didn't know what a saw was mm -hmm. and we framed one in in a day. Right. Right? So that's what I mean about partnerships or just even workers or anything. We're looking for skilled labor, mm -hmm. skilled labor that has common sense. And that may not, and everybody says, oh, well, it's hard to find, hard to find. Well, because we're in a big build, build boom industry, right? Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've been in the big boom build industry where I'm building tons of homes. We're framing, we're throwing stuff up. It's, it's just cutthroat, man. Right. And you're doing the same thing over and over and over. And you're building these homes for all these people. And it's just, wow, busy. Right. Then when I've come to this industry of building tiny homes, I've found that it's just so much more satisfying, so much physically easier on me, mentally easier on me. And it's almost because I get to be the electrician, the plumber, the framer, the trimmer, and the cleaner. Mm -hmm. I get to clean my home mm -hmm. and I get to spit, shine, and polish it and send it on its well, way. In a, in a quicker time too. So you get a, a quick end result. Build this, it. he'll be on here Maybe three weeks, yeah. gone. One guy, one right. guy. Okay, so you look, let's look at this. If and, anybody, making, and making great money. So let's see this, and I was just gonna point it out. Mm -hmm. So you go like this, you're gonna say, well, Randy, what are you paying your men? Well, yeah. I'm about to tell you. I think this is eight by, is it 28, man? 26, it Two, seems like. Three, four, five, six, I think it's seven, a 26. Eight, I think it's 24. Oh, okay. Oh, eight by 26, you're right. Okay. So eight, times 26 is 208 square feet. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is an RJO, we pay $39 a square foot. So that is $8,112 just for labor. Mm -hmm. If there's anything on there that goes above and beyond on our website that That's is very extra. simple to read, you go to our website, it says an RJO consists of these items. Mm -hmm. If you pick anything other than those items, that man gets more money. Mm -hmm. Picture windows, Murphy beds, more cabinets, skylights, whatever you want, he gets more money. Mm -hmm. So right now it's eight grand. So if we take that $8,000, right? And we're gonna divide that by three weeks, that man, is going to make 8,000 divided by three is $2,600 a week. Mm -hmm. That's over. If he did that every week times 52, you're looking at $138,000 a year. Let's knock off 30% of that, 40% of that, right? You're looking at eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year for a man who doesn't answer a telephone, he doesn't look for jobs, he doesn't work outside, and he has his own schedule. Mm -hmm. He comes and goes when he wants, and he takes a break when he wants, and he goes on vacation when he wants, and he doesn't have to talk to anybody. Think about that, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And do something he likes is physically good for him to do, mentally relaxing. And he's got blueprints, software, and he can get anything he wants and advice where he needs it. And Velma's right. So that's some serious money. It is very serious money. That's why you need serious people and skilled people. Think about it's this. It's a big deal. I had somebody tell me that this company built these beautiful homes and shipped them across the country. And they were big old, you know, customized, all that stuff. They were a couple, mm -hmm. three of them. They shipped them over there. Great. I'm sure they were well over $100,000 a piece and they can go ahead and do that. What I love about this, think about this, I guarantee you that their men 
building them homes did not make over $2,000 a week. Yep. Maybe one guy did, mm -hmm. a supervisor maybe, but I guarantee they didn't. And their homes are costing twice as much as ours. Yeah. So how do you figure these out, Randy? So how do you figure that you're paying your men, mm -hmm. I could be paying my men, right, if they want to do this and right. learn it, it's the doors open and I'm here to teach you. To make a hundred grand a year possibly, I'm not going to guarantee nothing, right? They can make a hundred grand a year and we're selling our homes for half what everybody else is in the country. Mm -hmm. How do you figure that? You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm on the ESPs, I'm paying over $5,000 per ESP panel home that I'm building. Five grand. So if it takes two weeks, that's $2,500 a piece. Now there's two guys in on that, right? And that's what I'm saying. It's quick and out the door. And we're trying to even cut them numbers down even more. Right. But they get them constant. <sighs> They're just rolling, right? Them guys are walking away with about 1500 bucks a week, if not more. But you're, and the quicker that they go, the more that they make. Yeah, and you're looking mm -hmm. at 1500 You're probably looking up right now, I'm thinking 52 uh, You're probably looking up close to, what, $65,000, $70,000 a year where they mm -hmm. were making $300 a week. Yes. I mean, come on. Stop. Yeah. Come on. And we're selling it for $25,000. I'm like... Everybody, this is a year of money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, I think it sure is. our economy, our world, we are about to hit another 2008 mm -hmm. because of the stupid greed that the realtors, yes. the builders, and the human beings, the citizens of our country are doing. Right. Everybody's wanting, oh, I sold my house for $42,000 more than I paid for it one year ago, or 100000 or I doubled my money in three years. Where do you think that money's coming from? Yeah, exactly. It comes from somebody going in debt that's now going to pay higher cost for your home that wasn't worth no more than what it was a year ago. Oh, because we got some fake money? We got some fake numbers that's right. ramp rampant? And then they're going to take their money that they did, right? That they, you, sold, mm -hmm. you sold your house. Then you're going to put it into another fake market. And it's, everybody's running after something. What are you going to do? That's if everybody's right. kept their head and kept mm -hmm. it level and take care of your money and take care of what you're supposed to do, don't overspend. You know what I always thought? You know, I was talking to somebody and they don't have, they don't have money for this and buying this and doing that. You know, I don't have a home of my own right now. I'm not, I'm not asking for any, uh, what do you call it, sympathy. <coughs> I, I don't have a home because I don't want a home. Mm -hmm. I love living in my little shed that I have. Whew, Ooh. that was close. You still good? I think so. Hold on. Your yeah. hands are dry. They're yeah. slick. Man, about dropped her phone. But I don't buy a home or a new truck or a new car, or I don't have lavish anything that I can't afford to keep. I just don't do it. I go without until I know I can afford something. I don't go, I don't buy anything unless I need it until I can afford to buy it. And I don't, I, I, everybody calls that discipline, like I'm the most disciplined person they've ever seen. No, I can't afford it. So I don't even put it in my head, you know? And that's why I love these homes, that we're able to build these homes, right, for such an affordable price. Pay these men great money. You get, hopefully, a good home if we keep doing what we're supposed to do. Are there mistakes made? Yes, there are. And I ha if I got an army behind me, I'm building it as fast as I can. And you know what? There's still mistakes. There's still things being slipped by. That person that the Amish are building and the Amish are coming by tomorrow. They're bringing their army here. They're bringing a bunch of guys here. And I said, good. Because when they took pictures, they didn't vacuum any of the, the uh, sawdust up. I hated it. I wanted vacuum. And I'm going to show them what his house looked like before he spray foamed and what it looks like now. And, how's, and I'm going to school them boys. But they're good guys. They're good-hearted men, and they want to do right. And they're coming down here to learn more. They were down here last week, they're down here this week, and they're coming down the following week. Because I really believe in them guys. They built this big, elaborate building, invested a lot of money, and they're just, they're good-hearted. They want to do a good job. And that's what I, that's really what I tell everybody here. Just want to do a good job and use your common sense.
right? Mm -hmm. So I guess tonight, I just wanted to bring to you, um, you know, I always try to bring a show that what is the, what has been going on throughout my day or the week and what are some concerns, what's happened, what's going on, right? We have a lot going on. We have Michelle coming in tomorrow night in her container that's going to be parked up and set up and she's got to be living in it at, at 6 p.m. tomorrow. We've still got to get it over there. We still have things in it that we need to get done and we'll have her ready to go in the morning, right? Um, is it hard organizing all these men? I've got men now by the hour that I've hired trying to get our ESPs going, trying to get them out the door, built, gone, and over with, right? We've got um, Mishkas from California. We're getting it nailed out, getting it going. We've got our resort homes that we're going. I'm getting another crew just for resort homes. I got all that going on, right? Plus going through accounting issues, going through business issues, going through setting up attorney things. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take care of my own personal um, things like doing a will and doing some other things and I'm trying to get my life organized, getting this thing as we grow, keeping you protected, making sure all this land is paid for, that the ladies that are coming here to retire, nothing can be pulled out from under you. It's paid for. And I'm telling you, I will show you the deeds and how everything's done. You can probably look them up in the courthouse if, you're, if you want to get online and look at them, right? So to do all that and to build these homes and to make sure your homes are built spot on, if I could tell you how important it is to have Tom, who's, who's as conscious about everything as I am, or if not more, right? And the people that love their jobs here and love want, want to do a good job, right? I do take on men that have had some past problems mentally, physically, um, that we're trying to help. They got some skill, I try to tap into them. I am not a charity. I am not a homeless place. I don't have money to take somebody on that can only have, give me a couple hundred dollars a month and I build them a home. I don't have those kind of pockets. I'm just, I'm a business guy, I'm a carpenter and I'm trying to build homes for people, right? That can afford to buy them. If I could finance you a home for $200 a month and you pay it for 25 years, I would do it. I just ain't got those kind of pockets. You know, we've also got investors that love what we're doing. I got an investor I'm building five Hobbit houses for. I got another investor I'm building two homes in the hopes of building, building maybe tens and twenty of hundreds of, of that later on. Um, a great guy. I've never met an investor that I really that appealed to me. You know, I like homeowners. I like to be diversified and I like building to people. But if an investor wants to come in and they like what we do, it's great. We built eight homes for an investor in North Georgia. The Blue Canoe, look that up. Go stay at their place. They got a great place in northern Georgia that you can stay in our homes. They got eight of them, and it's going really well, you know? So I wanted to point that out in the framing issues of how we do it. And I've skilled framing constantly, and I talk about it all in here. And it's not a big deal, but it is when you're getting your house built, mm -hmm. right? I have showed this right here, just this, and I'm going to go and show you what David's doing. Mm -hmm. Just showing you what I'm doing tonight, you ought to build a house. You ought to be able to build a house. When you do a house, you want to make sure it's square. Square is diagonal, is the same. So from this corner to that corner, let's say it's 322 inches. From that corner to that corner, it needs to be close to 322 inches. That's square. The next thing is plumb. When I want to plumb a wall, I put a level on here. Plumb is vertical. When I put my plumb level on here, that little bubble will be in between two lines. That means I'm plumb. If I'm level, I put it horizontally with the earth. And I look in my, in my level, and if it's a little bubble in those two lines, then I'm, I'm level. So we want to do square, plumb, level. You can do anything you want to build. You can build anything, except for a round building like this. You can't do that Yeah, here. That's a little bit tough. That doesn't fit. Clean, neat. Take care of yourself. All these guys, you can see caps on them. We check the water pressure. Mm -hmm. We keep pressure on these all the time. We pressure test our drains. We ANSI certify our electrical. All these plans are on a digital process with their phones. They get on, they can see the plans and what the customer says, hey, what they're bringing, what they're not doing, so we can detail it out. The next thing is quality control. Just walk through here and make sure everybody has, are they doing what they're supposed to do and the second biggest thing is inventory, like we've been talking. And keeping on just building this house, if you guys think about it, there's probably over 600 components to build this house. 
and you've got 20 homes going on at the same time. Those components have to be ordered, they have to be organized, they have to be placed on every single house from nails to staples to these little rings to that cap right there to this pipe to this pipe to that fitting right there which is a 22 and a half degree fitting and there's got to be four of them on this house we've got to have four not three but when somebody says hey we've only got two at the store we'll get them to you in a week from now well we'll borrow them from this and over here and then we come in oh are we going to remember to take that no because we got 22 homes going on at the same time so it is a real struggle to just keep everything rolling and going and going like that, right? I don't think that'll ever change, even in a perfect world with no COVID and everything's rolling. It's always gonna be a challenge in all these issues. And the only way I know to tell you all buying a house from us is that we have a staff that cares and is working the hardest we can work, right? To make things happen. I had a customer um, that changed their house around. I had several change their house around. After the plans were done, they get in the house and they don't want it and they just want something else in the house. And when it changed it up, it changed the entire uh, structure, not the structure, but the, the format of the home. It made it dangerous, it made it uncomfortable and inaccessible. But after it's built and they, and they see it, then they get mad at us because it doesn't work. When we've told them, that it's not gonna work, but we gotta do it anyway because they think they know what they're talking about and we do it. And so we gotta stop that to protect them and to protect us, right? Mm -hmm. And so me, I'm always wanting, all of us are always wanting our customers to be happy. But for some reason, the more we try to make them happy, it's like having a kid. The more you try to make them happy, the more they're gonna hate you, right? It just seems like it. The more you give, the more, so it's like we really need to stand and educate as we go and as we build. And I tell everybody all the time, you guys have heard me a million times, don't overthink these houses. Quit thinking about if you want your refrigerator on the left or the right or how I'm gonna do this or how I'm gonna, just the biggest thing is these rooms, you got a bathroom, you got a kitchen and you got a bedroom. Of course, I love a living room. And I love a living room being converted into a bedroom because I like everything on the main floor. And then all that really revolves around money. Yeah, you want a wood accented in your house on an ESP panel home, but you can't afford it, right? Do it later. Mm -hmm. Do it in two years from now. You're warm, you're dry, and this is who I'm talking about. I'm talking to people who are buying homes for twenty-five and thirty-five thousand dollars. You will not find a home anywhere in the country ever for that. I was listening today about inflation. You know, our inflation is going up like ten percent a year. They said actually ten percent. You've got to get a ten percent raise, right? on what you're making this year just to keep up with inflation to break even. I've been in business for over five years right now. I started out selling out my first home for 199. I still offer a home for 199. Almost six years ago. Just inflation alone should have went up two, four, six, eight, ten, almost $12,000. Isn't that amazing? So really my first is. home should be 32000 that I built just to keep up with inflation. You know, I'm not a smart money guy or numbers and all that, but it seems like that's, that might be the way to go right there, you know. And I'm still at 19.9 and making a living. So what's going on with everybody? I think it's part of being innovative. It's part of uh, watching where you waste money trying to be smart about what we do, cut costs and not be elaborate with anything. Not be elaborate with your lifestyle, not be elaborate with your company, not being elaborate and overspending where you shouldn't and taking off and spending your money somewhere. You guys ever see us gone? We're here, we're here constantly. We come on here every single night. We may go see our kids out of state where I've got to go see my boy or Amanda's got to go see her kids or Tom or something like that, but it's just for a few days, right? And I, and I wouldn't apologize if I could go for a month but it's just that we don't because this is a business that's still in its infancy stages, you know, and it takes a lot of work. And have we had a lot of hits? You wouldn't believe the hits we've had. We've had people take us to court saying we stole their stuff when it was sitting in the building. We've had insults. We've been building for people that, was, you know, that um, we've done what we were supposed to do. 
and they slam us on the social media. We give things away. I give homes away. The more I give, the more I cut my costs everywhere I'm at. It's still not enough, and it's just odd. And you know, I'm really finding out that there's, I think there's just people that just um, are just not right. They're just not right up here. I've never, you know, I've been, and, and we're, we're, we're good. We're rolling, and we're building homes. I just build homes. I'm like this guy right here building this house. I'm just like this guy or that guy building that guy. Me personally, I am a physical guy. I love working. I love physically moving, climbing ladders, climbing homes and building. But because I've turned this thing and it just took off on me, I don't get to do that like I used to, you know, and I miss it. And I hope to go back into doing that if we can take this year and restructure everything here. But my mentality is to work. It's not to be... I love people, I love talking to people, I love having fun, and I love doing all that, but my, my being is just a worker, and I love doing it. I love digging ditches, I love digging post holes, I love all that it has to take when it comes to building, right? Or anything like that. Um, but when it comes to negativity, when it comes to complaining, when it comes to whining, when it comes to any of that stuff, it's hard for any, any of us in here, because we're just so work oriented and going you know so it's new for us all this stuff is new for me to be able to not be able to build and to be able to have to you know um run a company in the public eye it is it's it's a challenge for me every day so but i wanted to just come out today's show show the framing maybe answer some questions for the customer that the amish are building they're going to be here tomorrow i'm going to talk to them um, we're going to go over their pictures. We're going to go over the more of the details that we have to have. And they're learning. And I'm, our warranty is always the same, no matter who builds it. If Albert builds it three miles from here, you know, or if Mike builds it right here, every, everything on it is still warrantied, taken care of, and we stand behind everything that we do. You know, is there any questions, Amanda? Yeah, everybody's just talking. They're talking about the, just what you're discussing. They're gabbing. They ain't listening to nothing I'm saying. They're listening to everything you're saying. Let's you go want see to show what David's doing. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to show how David's going down here. Uh, Travis had one question, but I, I try to ask stuff that's pertaining to what's going on, but um, he was asking about the ESP kits, that we don't do those. We don't do any more kits. We don't do any kits at all for anything. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about doing them there. It's just... I don't know. I just don't care. I, got time I don't to know go how people it. would handle it. If you're not trained, I don't know how yeah. you would do that. Yeah. So, um, Okay, framing the walls like we were down here at this one. Sheet and put your windows in. Super simple. These rafters up here are pre cut, those are dormer rafters. We have jigs that you build them. We pre thought this out for him before he got here. So mm -hmm. these guys have all these, they just do them to what we say you do them. That dormer wall up there, We've got them down. We tell them how tall to build it. Mm -hmm. Then you got a double rafter back there. That's like almost like a craftsman style. Everything's on the plans. You just follow the plans. We, not only do we have a plan, yeah. we have numbers. We have mm -hmm. lengths. He doesn't have to think about how long no. anything is. Right. He puts it together like a puzzle, kind of. Mm -hmm. But he knows, how, he knows how to fasten that rafter to that top plate. He knows the top plate has to have double top plate he knows it's got a sill for the for the window a top and bottom sill right. a jack a king stud all that stuff because he's a carpenter he's been here he's trained and he's learned you know so but as you can see those well you I can't see them. let me see he, i don't know if he's got an extra one here or not and i pointed it out before one time um he doesn't have it all right this sheet right here let me take this out of here Okay, if you take this sheet, and look, I'm going to show you how I do stuff. Now, you can either grab it, right? If i got to pick this thing up, you can grab it and squeeze it and raise it up. But let's just say I can't do that. My shoulder used to hurt me until I got a shot of cortisone in it. Now I'm good. Mm -hmm. But let's just say I want to pick it up. I'm going to just raise half of it up like this. I'm going to put my hand right in the middle of it, right? Now look here, I can walk around with one hand mm -hmm. on this sheeting. I can walk around the whole house, it's just holding right here. Now I'm not a strong guy, I mean, you guys think I might be, but I'm really not. So you can walk around here, put it where you need to be. Now there's little different tricks 
about putting this sheeting up with one man. And you'll figure it out if you work by yourself, mm -hmm. you know. I've got ways where I've done it by myself. David's got ways he's doing it by himself. That sheeting, probably the heaviest part of the whole house. That right there, and that's it. Those rafters up there are super lightweight. You can grab them, put them on with almost one hand. Like um, David, he put all his rafters up, walls up, scaffolding inside. It's really a, um, physically not like as demanding as when you build a regular house. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you get all these large rafters and cranes and all that stuff, you know. And that's why I like about it. Like, think about this. This house is so small. Let's say we have to get into there and there's a shower in there. I've done a house one time where I had a lady wanted a new bathtub. We couldn't get it down, down the living room and out the living, you know, down the hall in a regular home. I just took the whole side of the house out, exposed the bathroom, pulled out the tub, bought a new tub, put it back in, studded it and sheeted it back up and put the siding on. It's done. When we think about how these houses are put together, like up here, these studs, um, he's got them covered up. You just cut the top nails off and pull them out like a puzzle, put new ones in and put them down. Mm -hmm. It's really, when you start thinking about the simple basics of these homes and how they're done, it makes it kind of fun because you can tear them apart if you have to, mm -hmm. if you gotta fix something. It's not the end of the world, I guess. And uh, spray foam makes it a little bit more difficult because it is hard to work because you gotta dig in it and you gotta spray it back and replace it. Do you ever have to do that to a home? Not likely. And if you ever do, it's because you're adding an addition to it. You're adding something that will never have to be replaced. You're taking it out and putting an addition on or something, you know. Now, so this is a, a really good question. We haven't had it in a while. 317 Stitches, that's their handle. Can you buy this size home uh, just framed with the spray foam, electric, plumbing, flooring, um, roof, and the siding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sure can. We used to call them shells. Yeah. I will stop at any stage mm -hmm. you want to stop at. Yeah. And we'll price it accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Sure yep. Okay, good question. Yeah, we could dry the, like, a lot of people like to have it dried in. Is that what a dried in? Is we, it, what's Like weatherproof, in? you know? Weatherproof, like yeah. we can do, we can even put siding on. If you don't want, we could put the membrane on the outside and then you finish the siding if you want. Most times, usually, we had finished the outside completely. And then when we truck it across the country, they finish the inside, but right. we could wire it and plumb it too, and then you finish the inside. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's a good question, Travis, and I, would you do, I mean, I couldn't imagine you wouldn't uh, do a ESP shell. That would be great. You know. How does that work? I love to do those shells, and I think Manda was, Manda's been on me, everybody, about something. She wanted me to <laughs> offer. And I've been trying to work it out. I'm trying to see how I, I can do it. He's trying. And Travis brings up a good point. Yeah. I think people need a home. Yeah. And it's funny how somebody will tell me, I need a house, but I can't live in a 16-foot home. I know. Yes, that's right. I'd live in a dog house. Yeah. Before I'd live in my car. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd live in a four-bay no four <laughs> box before I'd live in my car. I know. So if, I, if you can have a 16-foot house, I've sold, how many times, have we, we've sold 50, 60 of those 16-foot homes, oh, if absolutely. not more. Yep, I, right. I love a 16-foot home. You can lay out, completely physically lay there and yeah. have a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom, and a storage loft. All right? Anyway, we're trying to see if we come up with a $15,000 house. Mm -hmm. That's what Amanda said. She's, you got to get down to $15,000 <laughs> house. And I'm thinking, all right, like I've Travis said, him. it almost, it'd be almost a shell yeah. Kind of in a way mm -hmm. on the inside. And you got to be able to finish it, you know. So I'm trying to, I always like, I don't know why everybody, I hate going up in price. Yes. It's not I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to build more expensive homes. I want to build more economical homes. Right. Don't get excited. We haven't done a $15,000 house. We haven't offered anything like that. Yeah. She says, God, Randy, why can't we do that? You know? Yeah. The only way to do that is to do less work in it. Yeah. You know? And we have it, to but leave But you know what? If everybody's mind frame would just change just a little bit, just mm -hmm. think about whatever situation you're in. If you've got the money to get whatever house you want, custom build, whatever, that's, that's fantastic. That's great. But if you don't, go ahead, get the $15,000 house. Start there, build from there, 
and later on maybe get a bigger house or maybe keep that house or rent it out or whatever you want to do but think simpler think smaller just get yourself in a house and we'll build it it's just going to be super plain and simple you'll be so surprised at what you'll be able to do with the house yeah. you'll come up with so many ideas you'll get on pinterest you'll do things on your own you'll be so proud of yeah. your little tiny house I'm if you can you. work at a grocery store yes come on you can fix up your house yes if you can go to work and do almost anything you can do on a house yes you can do it you can put yes. a little bit of barn wood in it you can trim a little window out you can get you a saw on it or something like that you know kathleen how can, sweet like yeah. if, if you bought if you got a oh he's trying to get a house, picture of your house <laughs> if you um he's see, a paparazzi see he's taking a picture and then putting it in his co-construct that's right exactly and there you go that's right now but, that's a, that's a great siobhan just made a great point that's why so many people are in house that are that have a house are poor they are living in a house they can't afford that is 100 percent true yes that is 100 percent true we have had people come to us and they'd say i can't you know i, I got this house but da, 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 da. but then after done it up they're ready to well i want to add a dormer well i gotta have this and it's like i thought you did i I thought you didn't have anything to do it with. You know, yeah. what are you, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, Amanda, that, that shed that I'm in, and I'm, I say it is a shed. I'm right. staying in the shed. Mm -hmm. I think it paid $3,200 for it. Right. It didn't have a trailer. It's just a shed. No windows. Had a door, mm -hmm. right? Had a floor. Right. I throw my mattress on the floor, and I've been living it all winter long, and I'm going to live it probably all mm -hmm. summer long. $3,200. Right. I'm done. I have a home right now. I'm dry, and I'm warm, and I'm cool. I'll fix it up when I get time. Exactly. That's what you got to think. Well, and Tisha said, I'm going to trim mine out, add shutters, and do window boxes myself. Perfect, There's man. just stuff that you can... I've it, had people call me and, and complain that they don't have money. Yes, right. But then want us to build shutters and flower boxes on a house. It's stunning. And I think, wait, well, I've tried to get you down to where we could get you a home, and now you're asking for extras when you said you didn't have any exactly. money. Exactly. I, I just think, don't understand I do that. think if it was offered, if you can figure it out to where it's $15,000 and we do them simple and they're just done, I think it will work out. I think there will be the people who, who desperately need those houses. Yeah. You know that. We've met people. You, we know, I know that. You know that. Yeah. And everybody on here knows that. You know, before I offer something like that, I'm going to have an army of people. You gotta we're going to sell 100 of That's them. That's right. And I'm going to have an army because I want, right. I want 100 of them done in a month. That's right. I do not want to let this string out. No. And I want I to agree. be efficient and done. You know? um, now, this is an interesting question. Um, I missed it a little bit ago. I'm glad he asked it again. Orville um, wants to know, uh, Amanda, question. When you guys frame... Uh, how often is poor product warp studs an issue for you guys? That's um, a good question. Which means calling it. We call the wood out. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, this is you know what you know what I've learned over the years. If we got an eight foot two by, and it's got a curve in it or warped, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can either you can get short pieces. So if we got two o windows, three o windows, or something like that, we cut them. Boom, boom. Or we need blocking. We need corners. We need all this stuff. So the, the majority of our culls are used in the house in places that, are don't, that don't need a straight mm -hmm. two by, or we make them straight because they're shorter lengths. Yeah. Um, another interesting question, Kathy is asking, good question, could you do a double wide on the mountain? Double wide, tiny home? A double wide. We've never That'd done one. We've never done one. Uh, I had somebody inquire about it one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it takes some thinking, but like I said, I'm always game for something new. Yeah, yeah. anything new, interesting like that. Mm-hmm. What, I'm wiping my eyeball. Oh, no, no, you're good. Oh, I thought you... No, you're... You looked at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> no. Hey. There's 374 people on here. Oh, my That's God. amazing. We had that last night. Yeah. Isn't that something? How many thumbs up do we got? 154. Everybody, you know what's coming. <laughs> I don't know if they'll give me a thumbs up tonight, but. It's been one of the things that was, uh, I think uh, Brian Cardi was on here. Have you been doing some stucco? I mean, they're just asking, or is just this a, a new bit. trend? 
What happened was, <laughs> is that well, what a, happened was the synthetic stucco. I told you will stick to your cat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you can't get it off. So I made the mistake. This is probably my favorite coat ever, and it's about wore out. Yeah. This is my favorite. Fits me good. It just ah, just nice. Well, I wore it stucco in. Uh, probably a couple, three weeks ago. I was showing mm -hmm. the guys how to stuff. Oh, yeah. oh my God. And these are my, my stretchy jeans. That's all I wear is these stretchy jeans. Mm -hmm. And I trashed them. So today I was doing some more stucco and I thought, I'm going to put these, I kept these. So I, I'm, they're always going to be, you know, trash. So I put these back on and I was showing the guys how to stucco today. Yeah. Um, how can people, um, I think you had said this before, how do they get the stucco flex if they wanted it for themselves? If you want it for yourself, um, you go to stuccoflex.com. Mm -hmm. All right, there's a company, the mother company is in Seattle, Washington. So we have to call Seattle, mm -hmm. Stucco Flex in Seattle. They're, they're combined with another company called Permit Cheek, right? Yes, correct. And they're out of Knoxville. Mm -hmm. Well, believe it or not, Knoxville, which is 45 minutes from here, has a hub for Permit Cheek, and mm -hmm. they make it all right there, and we go get it and done. So Either they'll ship it to you if you're in Arizona or in New York or wherever, but it's called Stucco Flex. Mm -hmm. You get Correct. it just like we do. I think it's $86 for a five gallon bucket. Done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have every color through that Sherwin, Sherwin yeah, Williams that Sherwin has, Williams except has. for what Becky had is the dark purple, and the pigment was too dark. So we had to paint it on top of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there any type of warranty on the homes? That's a good question. Enigma 522. I don't know if I, anybody's you know, I, ever asked that. You know what? We stand behind our homes so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, after, God, it's been a couple years. We've, people call us. Yeah, we'll fix it. I, and it's so crazy. But, and then we had a, a guy ask me, he said, hey, you know, we got a 90-day warranty. We'll fix anything. I said, I don't know. We just threw it out there. Right. Um, but when it really comes down to the, the structure, yeah, we'll warrant it for a year. You know, mm -hmm. it means the windows and the leaking and the gutters, you know, the roofing and the structure itself. Mm -hmm. Anything inside, um, you know, appliances, water heaters, stuff like that, we, we don't warrant you that long. Like that. Right. How many buckets of stucco, uh, Jeffrey's asking, that's a good question. How many buckets to stucco a home? You know, we're... We're playing around with that. There's a square footage process, like 150 square feet per bucket or something. It all depends on the uh, applicator. Mm -hmm. We really messed up on our first house. The guys didn't know how to do it. And so they were using the trowel and they put way too much product on. We went through half our product on the first coat. Oh. Right? And we got to double coat everything inside and outside. So we did a, I did a little bit of different process. And so like I, I told you, and we're going to do a video on it is we roll it on the wall and then we use our knife to spread it out. Now Amber just posted six gallons per color. Is what is is that something that you had eighteen gallons per house on an eight by twenty fours is what we bordered. So is that correct six gallons per color? It, well you can't go by color, you Col go by yeah. square footage. Yeah I thought so okay. I, I knew it I was like I think it's like half right, but I was just wanting to double yeah, check. That's all right. Um let's But if see. you bought if you if you um Let's say you want to stucco this wall, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to stucco this wall, you measure from that end to that end. Okay. Let's say it's 20. Yeah. And it's eight foot tall. Mm -hmm. So 20 times eight, two times eight is 16. Mm -hmm. So it's 160 square feet. Now I don't eliminate the windows. I just go 160 square feet. So you go to each four walls. That's how much coverage you have. If you have a dormer, it's 10 foot by three foot, 30 more square feet. You probably got about 60 square feet on a dormer. Mm -hmm. You may have 500 on the outside, 560 square feet I need to cover. Mm -hmm. Call Stucco Flex. This is how many square feet that I have to cover. How many gallons do you guys advise I use? Right. Okay. Yep. That's a, that's a good question. Okay. Very simple. Yeah, very simple. And you do the inside the same way. Mm -hmm. and the inside is going to be exactly like the outside unless you have interior walls, in your ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Any more questions? We're almost at 400 people. We're at 399 watching. Good God. How many thumbs up we got? Uh, 230. Thank you. Yeah. That thumbs up helps us, guys. If you could do it, it's supposed to get these, you know, videos out and show the world. 
we're a tiny home company. And like I said, I'm showing you area. I'm telling you how it is. I'm telling you about money. I'm telling you about people. I'm telling you what, what's hard about this business, what's great about this business. I don't know uh, where else you can go. Let me ask some questions because they got some questions coming in. Misty wants to know, uh, Randy, will stucco make a trailer heavier? Great question. Well, it's going to add to the weight of the home, anything mm -hmm. you put on it. But it's probably the least amount of weight of any product you're going to have. Okay. Yeah. It's lighter than the wood. It's lighter than the bee groove. Yep. Think about it. On a stucco, you don't use any window trim, no siding, no bee groove on the inside, mm -hmm. and it's almost maintenance free. That's awesome. Uh, now, how would you clean it? Nobody asked that, but I'm just curious. Just a water hose. Just water you know, hose? Just pressure wash it. Would you scrub it? it? Yeah. You don't scrub it you or scrub pressure it, yeah. wash it a little mm -hmm. bit? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Kawana wants to know, will you convert a school bus for me? Yes. We've had people ask that over the years, and love we've to. wanted to do that I'd forever. I've got guys here that would love to get into one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I'd like to get in and try to fix it up. <coughs> Randy was right. It's between 140 to 150 square feet per pail, right? There you go. Okay, Travis said that. Okay. Um, what's, I'm, I'm trying to get people's questions now. Any questions that you have, we've, we've got him. But your second coat goes on quicker, takes less product. Uh, Mary wants to know how do you mount heavier items like kitchen ca uh, like a kitchen cabinet on the wall? Did we ever figure out how to do? We got to do that. Show how to mount stuff onto the yeah. stucco wall. You know, um, that's a good question on the cabinets. Yeah. Um, you can use. You know, I haven't done one. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't hung anything up. When we did, I actually put a piece of plywood up. Right. We would glue the back mm -hmm. of the plywood and screw it into the panels. I built the house that had had wood corners, wood trim, cedar shakes, and it was an ESP panel home. Mm -hmm. Everything worked great, but it was aesthetically put on. It wasn't something that was holding something up. So when it comes to cabinets and all this stuff you put in the cabinet, I don't know what I would do there. I'd have to look into that. Are you doing, Charles wants to know, are you doing blueprints for custom homes? How do we do the blueprints here? Um, we don't sell blueprints. We right. just don't have our designers that are freelance. Mm -hmm. They only design our homes that we sell for our customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how do you stuck up? How does the stucco hold up going down the highway? Oh my God! It is the We've best traveled. ever. Yeah. It is the best, you guys. If you go, you go to the website. Go to stuccoflex.com or mm -hmm. stuccoflex on YouTube. That's the best. Go to YouTube. You'll will see these videos that are amazing of the product. Um, let's see, Kitty, let's see, can you counter sink the screws in an ESP house? Maybe that's what she's asking. Counter sink the screws? No, it's, it's a flat head and the flat head mm -hmm. of the screw actually is part of the mechanism, you know, part of the structure, the strength of it because it holds it together and it spreads out, you know, of a screw head. But when you put stucco flex, it just hides it, you know. Uh, Mishka's wanting to know, Randy, how much weight do you think you could have an ESP in an ESP loft? That's a good question. Like Kerloff we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys remember, we did a, a, a loft. It's an ESP. So it was about 90, probably what, 96, 92 mm -hmm. inches wide, right? Free span, no lumber, metal or anything underneath it. And it was eight, let's just say eight by eight. I jumped up there. I was, what am I, 180 pounds? Mm -hmm. Tom jumped up there. I'm Mike say, was up there, I'm Jersey saying, Mike. So Mike, Tom's 230. I'm 180. Mm -hmm. Mike. Jersey Mike. I ain't gonna say how heavy Mike is. Mike's he's up there. He's he's better every bit of Tom or more. He's right? healthy. Then we had Ace up there who's 50 mm -hmm. pounds. Yeah. And then we had another man. I bet you he's 160 pounds doing pull-ups on it. That is true. That is true. So when we put all that together, we were all thinking we had about seven, eight hundred pounds up mm -hmm. in the loft. Uh, now, here's a good question. Mary A. wants to know, can we buy upper kitchen cabinets to match the bottom cabinets? Yes, you surely can. That's a good question. Yeah. Sam uh, was talking about that today. Oh, really? And we hardly ever put up any upper cabinets, but we are working with a cabinet company now. They're all wood. They're all finger jointed. They all have cloth, uh, soft closed hinges, mm -hmm. everything. They can be delivered in That's 10 days. That's who we're going with. Anywhere yeah. across the country. And they come in beautiful colors. Now, I may have uh, not asked the right question. Charles is still asking, are you still doing blueprints for custom homes that ITH builds? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. We sure are. Um, how does this... Okay, we already answered that. So, how would you put up a big TV on an ESP home? I'd probably mount a plywood. Yeah, put some wood there. On the wall, mm -hmm. you know, and mount that plywood on the wall. 
and mm -hmm. we put adhesive behind it and we screw it to the panels. Jeffrey wants to know, so can you probably can't put a Murphy bed uh, in an ESP home? Yeah, you can do a Murphy bed okay. in an ESP. A Murphy bed is only, a, it's, it's just attached to the wall, that's it, but a Murphy bed would be made. I love Murphy beds. Yes. I think they're awesome. I do too. I think they're, I think they're neat. A Murphy bed is the best if you have a sofa in front of it that you mm -hmm. can kick back on and then you, you, lay, you lay your bed over the sofa. Lori wants to know, hey Lori, is it possible to glue cedar shakes to the stucco so no holes in the foam board? Uh, cedar shakes to stucco. Yeah, you can glue them. Um, what would you, you would? You don't have to worry. You know what? I put cedar shakes up in the mm -hmm. foam house, right? The ESP home. And I used a finish nailer and I just, or a stapler and I just stapled them in. Listen, if you put your cedar shakes up and you put them upright, they're not going to leak. There's no water going to get to the staples. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll be fine. But I used adhesive too. Uh, Mishka wants to know, do you think it would hold a 200-pound bed? Talking about her loft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy. Um, JTH, do you have any designs that are handicap accessible? Well, my mom's house is handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if you're going to want handicap accessible, I always go at least 10 foot wide. Mm -hmm. 10 foot, we can get you in there because that gets you around kitchen cabinets to get you into the bathroom. You want 36 inch door openings and a shower that doesn't have a lip. But yeah, we can set you with grab bars around the toilets, mm -hmm. the showers, it the can living be done. room. And you want, like my mom lives in one and I have it all on one floor. Mm -hmm. She's able to sit, watch TV, eat, kitchen, bathroom with her walker. Um, another, let's see, there was another good question. Hang on a second. Um, oh, where, where did they ask that? Just, well, um, I'll just try to remem remember it. Uh, they were asking on their home, here it is, we're getting outside wood, uh, Carrie. Um, hey, Carrie, we're getting outside wood accents on our two ESPs. Will accents be done before or after the stucco? After. That's a good question. After. After. So any accents would go on top after. of the stucco? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if that part wasn't going to be stuccoed, you don't, you still put stucco there. Yeah. Okay. But not like inside on the interior when you said if somebody wants something behind the stove, a backsplash. Well, there's don't never put... going to be ever anything there. You okay. Know? Right. Now, if, if, let's say if somebody wants cedar shakes up in the gable, I wouldn't stucco it because you'll never be, you know, you don't need that. But okay. when, it, when it comes to corners and all that. Okay. Okay. I see what you're yeah. saying. Corners and window trim and yeah. Uh, can you mark? I just want asking, hey, Mark, can you seal a basement with stucco flex and bury it? You know, no, I wouldn't use that product. That's not, that's not what it's made for. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. And of course, how difficult is it to put up decorations on an ESP? We'll put some, um, we said we were going to do it. We hadn't had yeah. time. Put stucco on a panel and then we'll actually hang some stuff on it. Yes. Do a test. Great idea. Let's we'll do, do some that. strength tests on that. And I want to do that mm -hmm. temperature Test. The temperature test. We got to so order that gun that heat the heat. We should do that front. Well, thing. we probably won't. Oh, you won't be here. That's what I forgot. Hold yeah. on. I'm we'll going to go do it see my week. son in California, everybody. And for we'll a couple do that. Days. Well, let's order the gun or whatever you got to have and yep. we'll do it next week. We, I want to see how hot it gets. Yeah. Right. Uh, Charles is wanting to know about talking to a designer, uh, answering some questions before they do the design. That would be you. Me. <laughs> it would be it would be Randy. I'm taking care of all the design. You got exactly when you do, when and you, it's working out great. When isn't you it? buy a house from me, mm -hmm. right, or us, and you buy a house from us, I want a sketch. Mm -hmm. I want to know what do you got in your head. Send in a sketch, and yes. you write on there. This is how I want to live. This is what I want in my house. It's called a wish list mm -hmm. and a sketch. I want a dishwasher. I want a garbage disposal, and I want a man-eating dog house. All right, whatever it is you <laughs> want to have, you make that list, and then you tell me. I want my bathroom there, and my kitchen there. I want my bedroom here, and I want 14 windows done. And try to mark where you want your windows. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'll take that information. I may talk to you a little bit. I won't talk to you more than 15 minutes. Yeah. I take that and send it to the designer. He gets back. You got something to look at. I'll call you again. We talk another 15 minutes. That's all it takes yes yeah if you're detailed and you're saying i want to plug particularly three inches from that corner and i want up here and i want one underneath there because i've got a curb and i gotta 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 got you all you have to do and that's fine we can do it all you have to be able to describe where you want it yes i can't walk you through it right correct so what i would do if i was a person mm -hmm. that wanted maybe these windows exactly where judith wanted them Right. What I would do is I would take me a graph paper and I would make me a picture of this wall right there mm -hmm. is what I would do. 
and I would draw where I want my windows. And if I want them particular, because I have an amoir that's 22 and a quarter inches to fit between these two mm -hmm. windows, yeah. I would make sure that I've got a square that equals a foot, and I've got one square, and I've got two squares that are in between there. Mm -hmm. And I write on there, I need 22 and a quarter inches between those windows. Done. I don't have to talk to you about it. You give me the information, we draw it. This is a box yes. of less than 300 square feet. And send in your send in your um, sketches to sales. You can send it in while you're doing your um, contract. Man, send it at, in. Look at that, man. Hey, hey. Look at Jesse. Look at him. He don't want to talk. <laughs> He's, you are not fixing your hair. <laughs> It is not a clock at night. You ain't fixing your hair. Hey, come over here and show the world who, what a real man looks like. Who is looking at you at 9 o'clock at night on here? Look here. Look at it. Hey. You want to see the house? Did you play football? <laughs> Actually. Oh. <laughs> Look at him, Amanda. He is soaked, man. You want to see the He's house? He's been working. What kind of house? Right outside my door. Did you spray it? The one for Al. See? He was spraying Al's house mm -hmm. tonight. Look Four good? Four walls and ceiling. He did the floors, the walls, so they didn't have the subfloor on yet, did they? No. And see, that's what we were talking about tonight. There's no subfloor. Yes. So he sprayed the floor, the that's walls, right. and the ceiling, and now Al will go back and put the floors on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give him one by eight or decking, the sheeting. Whichever, yeah. whichever it calls for, and mm -hmm. then we'll give him the one by 12 for the walls, awesome. ceiling, and let it go. They said a working man. They're all liking what they're seeing. You know what Maria said? Maria said, is it raining outside? <laughs> <laughs> if I probably squeeze this, it might. It probably will. Oh, thank you, Good buddy. job, Jesse. But, yeah, he's all, done. all right, buddy. You know, I heard it going. I was like, what is he out there spraying? Oh, I know he's out there doing something. It, man. Oh, he's, yeah. get, he's wanting it ready because the guy's ready to take it home. We got to get it done. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. See, Shell Savage said it was, it's she said okay, it's buddy. raining men. <laughs> All right. She said she said it's raining men. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Hey everybody. You did you know you need to say hit the like bucket. Hit the like bucket, everybody. Yeah. If you would, come on, everybody, come on. I don't know if we got still got four hundred people on there, but we got three hundred and ninety seven. We gotta have at least three hundred people hit the like bucket. <laughs> All right. There somebody said it earlier, said Randy, finish your thoughts, said you started it the countdown, you didn't finish. Jesse getting slim. Ooh. Siobhan to notice that Jesse is fit. 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 He's on the Randy workout program around here. <laughs> yeah, that's why I eat brownies and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, it jumped up to 314. No, thank I didn't you even so notice much, it. everybody. Yeah, that like bucket. If you guys will hit the like. I say like bucket because my get always get tongue tied in here. It's a like button, and I get you know. And we lost the like bucket. We lost the bucket, and we have cool no idea too. where it's at. Think about us being on here for an hour or more every day, yeah. five days a week for years and years, <laughs> and the words that we've said and everything. Yeah. And I was told man the other day. I said, and how we have not stumbled over oh. any kind of discolored no. anything about mm -mm. nothing. No. Right. We come to you as who we are. That's right. And that's it. Hi. Oh, I talked to, can I say hi to um, uh, Ed and Jane? Um, we're building them a home. Are you asking me if you can say hi to them? Yeah, well, I don't ask you to do Stop. anything. So I'm just saying. Um, but they were so nice. I talked to them today and they were an absolute hoot to talk to. And they're, uh, they're doing the 21st mortgage and they're about to finalize all their kind of stuff. And... Um, they were just so nice. They said, you know, we just feel like we know you. Said it, we're just, but we get down to the papers and you start reading it and you get nervous. And I know it. I hate said, those papers. She said, they both said, thank you so much for calling and reassuring us. Yeah. And, and said, hey, you know, we just got nervous. When you start seeing stuff, um, especially paperwork, it looks legal. Listen. It makes you nervous. I hate it. I hate it. We do we I hate do the too. contract. Yes. I wish I didn't even, I, I, I wish I, I didn't even have one. Handshake. The only reason we've done it is because we had some. Ugh, customers yes. are just like, nye, nye, nye. I just don't want it. I don't want a contract. We hate it. Either you want your house if you don't, The contract man. used to be one page. Remember, we well, used to handwrite it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was so It was nothing. And it I was would nothing. I so rather go back to that. I don't even know how many pages it is now. It's you like, know what? Uh, we have the people that have bought a house, give us some money, and turn around and they want all their money back. Carmen said the same thing. I hated that paperwork. It is so I hate it. exhausting. But when somebody says they want a house, you build them a house. You don't get their money, and then they say they don't want the house no more, and you got to give them all their money back. That yeah, kills us. It does. Because we're buying stuff I with know, it. I know, I know. And I'm like, now we got to say, okay, you remember when you sign it, just make sure you want the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we need your money to keep growing in this company to build your home and I buy know. materials and go. I know. So, anyway, so, yes, I agree. I don't like the paperwork either. Yeah. I mean, it's like anything's up for dispute. It is. Any of contract is the only contract is as good as a handshake of the people you guys believe in. Yeah. That's it. And I tell you, you want to come here and visit us, please come anytime. Well, no, don't. Yeah, come everybody. <laughs> no. Come in come in droves. <laughs> and don't well, call first. Well, <laughs> Just show up unannounced. We, listen, we've been having people coming without an Constantly. appointment. Let us know Double that you're coming. We've got, to, we've got we've got to know. Book. That you're coming because you have to be shown around because there's you can't just walk around here. You will get hurt. I let everybody just walk. You okay? I'm saying right now you're going to get hurt. <laughs> Do not. Our insurance guy said. Don't Our insurance let guy is coming in. tomorrow. He's going to pass out. <laughs> is what don't he's going let him to. in, Randy. He said, "Do not let anybody walk in here." No. That's what he says. Yeah. So but, yeah, just call for an appointment. Just make sure that you I, have you know, an appointment. I, I can't. I can't stop from really sneaking in. Stop it. Stop letting people. Somebody's going to get hurt, Randy. I know. Well, you know what? You get, when you go through the gate on 34 acres, there's screws in the ground from the gate. Randy says yes. I say no. <laughs> no. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Yes. Look, he's locking it up. It's time to go. Time. We got to go. He's yeah. going to shower down. Um, we'll be here tomorrow. Yes. And then I am going to California on Thursday morning. I'll be gone till Bye, Sunday. Jesse. I'm going to go see my boy in, uh, in California. Hey, stick these on the desk for hell. Okay. Turn the plane for that house. Got it, buddy. Thank you, man. Yeah. Say goodbye to the world there, Jess. Toodles. <laughs> Toodles. 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 <laughs> you know, Jesse watches this. He watches the show. Yeah, he's probably watching. He was probably watching when he was in her spray foam. Oh, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> You're awful. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm going to be out of town from Thursday to Sunday. Quick trip. Go see my... I haven't seen my boy in about eight months. And uh, he asked me to get him out of town. He's in L.A. He's a film editor. He's been doing some really great, fun projects. He's moving up in his career, and I'm really proud of him. And uh, so I'm going to go see him. And I'm excited just to, you know, get him out in the woods, in the desert, or whatever it is out there, and we're going to hang out. So... Anyway, I'll be gone from Thursday to Friday. Mandy will bring the show Thursday and Friday to mm -hmm. you, so she'll be all girl on you. It'll be all girly. Yeah. Don't ask anything technical. We don't know anything. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> all right, have a great night. We'll yep. be back tomorrow night, all right, to show you more of who we are, all right? And I'm sure we'll have some kind of great topic to talk about. Look here. He comes at the last He comes minute. right How did you the know the show was show? over? How did you know? <laughs> you were here at the beginning, and then you're here at the end. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is Ace, everybody. And he was. Yes. He's been raised up with a pup right on this this show. He's a little over a year now. What are you doing, baby? Oh, mm -hmm. He's been into something. All right, I'm ready to go to bed. Man, did I tell you I get up 4:30 and go work out every morning? Did I tell you that, and I eat kale and spinach and. Yeah, Come on, Ace. We, we, we I heard go. something about it. Let's go do stuff. Somebody emailed me or something. I don't know. Come on, Ace. <laughs> Leave her out here. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We don't need her. Come on. Let's go to bed. You'll get up at 4.30 with me, won't you? <laughs> Travis said, oh, Lord, 4.30. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's we're trying to make a mark in this world, ain't we, buddy? Yeah. Bye, everybody. You know where I'm going? Good boy. Good boy. Come on, you've done enough running. Come on. Come on. Good boy. <laughs>